Ladies and gentlemen, today's video is all about the vehicle warehouse. That is right, it's been a long time coming. I haven't done a video on this yet because I've been waiting for it to go two times pay. And if you're watching this video when it came out, it is currently two times pay on vehicle warehouses. If you're watching it in the future, no worries if it's not two times pay. I'm going to be going, it's like kind of a guide anyway. I'm going to be showing you how to set everything up, how to make sure you source only top tier vehicles and make the most amount of money with this business. So first and foremost, here we are. We are outside of my personal vehicle warehouse, but that's what you're going to need in order to do this. So in order to get one of these, the first thing you're going to need to do, if you're like, all right, I'm ready to start. First things first, you're going to go into your phone. You're going to go into Dynasty Executive, and then you're going to go to Offices. Now with these offices, these give you your CEO abilities. You get to have a vehicle warehouse. You can have a special cargo warehouse. It's just a great business to have. So you get to choose between these four. This one here for me was free with the Enterprise Start pack so if you have this for free definitely go for this one i had this one for basically like 12 or maybe 11 months until recently they were on sale and i had a lot of money i'm like you know what i'm gonna buy this one which is the one at the beach but honestly you can get the free one or the cheapest one possible a lot of people like to go for maze bank tower mainly because it's the most expensive Currently, it is 50% off. 50% off when you're watching this. So if you don't own one, now is the time to buy or upgrade. And then there's the Arcadius Business Center as well. I personally just like this one, Lomba Lombank, not Lombard, Lombank West, because it's near the beach and I like the view. All right, and once you have purchased your CEO office like mine right here, I have a lot of money um, all scattered around just because I've I have a lot of money in the bank and I've done a lot of you know special cargo sales and things like that. So it gets a little messy. But once you look at this view, though, man, this is why I love this office. I mean, there's nothing better. I'm sorry. But once you've purchased your office, you're going to need to purchase a vehicle warehouse. So go ahead and sit down at your computer. And then once you log in, this is going to be the options you have. So for this video, it's all about vehicle cargo. But if you are new to the game and you've just purchased in a CEO office, special cargo is also awesome. I do have a lot of videos on that. I don't do special vehicle work at all. And then vehicle cargo, I really don't do very often. Uh, but since it's two times pay this week, I thought we'd jump into it and give some newer players just a little guide, just in case, you know, you don't know how to do it. So click on vehicle cargo. And once you're in, you can see I currently have only exported one vehicle. That's on this account. This is a new account. It's been a year old. But even in the past accounts I've had, I, you know, I just didn't do this too often. But anyway, the first thing you're going to want to do is purchase a warehouse. So you can see uh, these are all the warehouses right here. Now, as far as locations, what is the best location to purchase? I personally love the one that I have, which is the La Puerta Vehicle Warehouse. And the reason I like this, just like my auto shop and a lot of my other businesses, it has a place right next to it where you can park helicopters and vehicles. And that's what just the way that I like to do it. Some people like to be further away from the city if you want to sell in a public lobby, just so there's no people around you. And I will be talking about how to sell this and where to sell this here towards the end. But for now, honestly, I just wouldn't get this one down here because it is just so far away. Uh, but any of them should be fine. And if you're tight on cash, just get the cheapest. Okay, so once you've purchased one, let's say you own this one like I do right here. If you go to renovate, it's just going to be cosmetics. I'm just going to keep mine basic, even like it's just not worth it. I'm going to keep it basic. I don't need to waste the money on this. I don't use this very often, even though I have like 100 million. It's just I'm not wasting my money. And then from here, you can source vehicles. So first things first, if we back out of this here, one item that can make your life a lot easier is going to be a cargo bob. So if I go into um, our war start cash and carry right here, you can see there's the regular cargo bob or the jet sam. I genuinely don't know the difference between these two. If somebody knows, leave it in the comment section. It's been like, what, eight, nine years, maybe longer. I'm still not a clue what the hell the difference is between these two. But you do not need one of these for the vehicle warehouse, but it could make some of the missions a little bit easier, both the source missions and sell missions. So I have owned this one, or I do own this one, and I'll show you why it's important now. Okay, so you set up, You've let's say you own a cargo bob. If you don't, it's okay. You can just use an oppressor or something like that. That's what I do most of the time. But we are going to get into how to only source top range vehicles, because this week it is double pay. So you want to make sure you are selling those top range vehicles. I'm going to show you how to do that only. I'm going to show you the fastest, easiest way to do these missions. Absolutely everything. But at this point, we've got to do the first mission, right? So let's go ahead and source vehicle. Confirm. 
Okay, this is actually perfect. If you're just starting out or you're like, you know what? I'm just starting with the vehicle business. The mid-range and standard range is exactly what you want to start off with. So anyway, I'll explain that once we've delivered the vehicle to the warehouse. So now we're going to speak to our concierge right here. And we can go down to our cargo bob. And now this is going to spawn us on the roof in our cargo bob. All right, and here we go. And now here's the thing. With these vehicle delivery missions, there's literally about 30 okay. different scenarios you could do. So the Eclipse Boulevard, most of the time when it has a yellow text writing like that, you can't really use the cargo bob. Um, most of the time you have to do something as well as just get the car. So let's speed this up until we get there. But a lot of the missions, it could just say steal the car. And you can literally just fly on down with this and pick it up even when it's on the road, just like this. Take a look at this. Okay, so like I say, there is multiple different missions for these vehicle steals. Um, so I can't really show you all of them just because there is so many. So let's see what this one is going to be. After you've done them for a long amount of time, you'll be able to realize, okay, the Eclipse Boulevard, I remember what that is. I know if I can take the cargo bob or if I should just drive there or take an oppressor or something like that. Uh, but for this one, let's see exactly what this mission is going to be for. See, so now it's telling me to steal it now that we've got here. But I'm assuming there's going to be something up behind here. Yeah, so there is. There's a car show. So we are going to have to take out these people. All right, last guy. There we go. So now we could just grab our helicopter in here and pick this up now. If we would have picked it up beforehand when they were all here, they would have been shooting at the helicopter. And the helicopter, as big and scary as it looks, you, uh, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, it's, it's a delicate thing. So I am actually going to still pick this up with a cargo bob just because we have it here. And I want to show you the setup that I have at our vehicle warehouse in order to be able to do this for like an hour or two and uh, just be in the perfect position. So once you're up, you're going to make sure you deploy your little hook right here. And then you're just going to fly on over the car just like we did when we picked it up when it was moving. All right, we've picked up the vehicle because chances are even like it's something like this where we're still so close we could have driven it. You're still going to probably get some of the bad guys chasing you and they're going to do damage to the car. And you obviously, the lower the repair cost, as you can see right there, ours is at zero, the more profit you're going to get. So let's speed this up. See right there, they're coming after you. So we're in a helicopter. We don't really need to worry about them. So let's speed this up. And all right, here we are coming up to my personal storage unit that we started off here the video with. So you can just make sure you don't crash into the wall. You can lower it down right there. And as you can see, it is perfectly delivered. So now let's go over some of the other information. But before we do that, let's make sure we park this thing perfectly. And this is the reason I like this warehouse. Um, some of the other ones have room too, but I just, I don't know. This is the one that I've been using for so many years. I'm just so used to it. So we're just going to park this, our cargo bob, just right down here. Like so. And we're going to have a complete setup out here. I'm going to be showing you how to just maximize everything speed and efficiency. But first of all, let's go inside and explain how to do the sourcing. Okay, so this is the inside of my vehicle warehouse. There is some cars filling up right here. Mine is not full just yet because I just started a few hours ago. Um, obviously, this new two times money just started. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to jump in and set this thing up. So if you go to your computer, so right here, this is what you're going to look at. You can see the standard range, top range, mid range. So we're going to go ahead and filter and we'll do top range. So in a couple hours, you can see the majority of my vehicles I've sourced are top range. And you can sell these this week for $260,000 each in a public lobby. Actually, $300,000, sorry. And I'm going to be going over all of this in a minute, but that is insane. So you can see this is the top range and this is the one that you want. This is where you're going to get the most profit. And then you have mid range, as you can see right here. We have what, six, seven of those. And then standard range, we have six of these. So obviously, if you're selling, you want to make the most amount of money. So you want to have top range vehicles. But how do you only source top range? Well, it's actually really easy. And it's what I've been doing for the last couple hours. And you can see how many cars I've got in just a couple hours. So 
in order for you to fill up your entire warehouse, it's probably going to take you around four hours. But why do you want to fill it all the way up before you start selling? Well, there's 32 vehicles that you can fit inside of your warehouse. 10 of them are going to be standard range. 10 of them are going to be mid range. And 12 of them are going to be the top range vehicles. So in order to fill up only on top range vehicles, you're going to have to get all 10 of the standard range vehicles. You can't have any duplicates. Let's say you have two of the Felter. You'll have to sell one of them and keep going until you have all 10 of the variants of these cars without any duplicates. Now, once you've got 10 of the standard range vehicles, you want to also make sure you have 10 of the mid-range vehicles. Same thing without any duplicates and don't sell any of them. Because once you've got 10 of the mid-range and 10 of the standard range, they're full. You have all of them. You've Literally, it's like you've collected them all and you have them. So then, once you have 10 of each and when you go to source vehicles, you will only source top range vehicles. But if I was you, what I would do is especially this week while it's double money is let's say you play for three, four hours so that you can fill up all of the standard range, all of the mid range. Within that three or four hours, just like me right now, you're going to get a bunch of top range vehicles. So once you keep going and going and going and you fill all the way up, start selling these. It's double money right now. So you can just start selling these and you can sell one every 20 minutes. There is a 20 minute cooldown. But with inside of that 20 minutes, you can carry on. You can carry on sourcing or just make sure you get to 10 of the standard range and 10 of the mid range and then sell your top range vehicles and then just keep going. I'm going to have a video tomorrow explaining how to sell these and how to make the maximum amount of money selling. But for now, this is just about how to set up this business. So again, one more time, just jump into the game, play for like three or four hours. Just don't sell anything. Try and get every single vehicle. But what your goal is here is to get 10 of the standard range, the whole collection and 10 of the mid range. So now you're like, OK, now I know what I have to get. What is the best, fastest, most efficient way of sourcing these? Well, let me show you. So at this point, I assume if you're doing the same thing I am, you have a cargo bob sitting right there, which is perfect. You can do a lot of missions with that, and it's also fantastic for sail missions. I'll explain the sail missions a little bit later on, but you can do sail missions with that as well as the source missions. But the first thing you're going to want to do, I assume a lot of people already have this, is go to your terabytes and request your terabyte. Now, if you don't know the terabyte, you can do a lot of source missions, not only for the vehicle warehouse, but your other CEO businesses like your uh, special cargo warehouse and things like that. So typically it'll spawn right here. Nine times out of 10. Of course, when I'm making a video, it's actually spawned all the way over here. Okay. And here we are. And we're literally just going to be parking this thing right outside so at this point we're almost actually we are set up now if you don't have an oppressor i would recommend getting your sparrow or buzzard or something like that and you can park that right here also but for me like i said i'm going to be using the oppressor which just so happens to be part of the terabyte so it's actually stored in the back now why do we have this set up here so like i say the cargo bob is great for a lot of missions like the one i showed you i'll show it on screen again right here where you can literally just go and pick up vehicles sometimes they may be moving sometimes they'll be on the street and when you source a mission Usually when it's blue text and it tells you just to pick up the vehicle, usually you can grab the cargo bob, go over there, pick it up and bring it back. Now, sometimes you've got to kill people. Sometimes there's going to be missions where you have to race people or you have to race across the map. So you can't just pick it up with the cargo bob. Sometimes you're going to have to make sure you get in the vehicle and you have to keep it above a certain speed limit. So you have to drive it. So again, you can't use the cargo bob. But as you do this more and more, you'll start realizing what you can and can't use this for. Now, as far as cell missions are concerned, if you are in an invite only lobby, I would 100% only sell with the cargo bob. So as soon as you're inside your business and you click sell, you're going to drive your vehicle out onto the street right here, pick up the cargo bob, and then pick up the vehicle and deliver it via the cargo bob. Because in invite only lobbies, you will have NPCs chasing you down and they will destroy your vehicle or make it so you get a very little amount of profit. But if you do it in a public lobby, which is what you should be doing, you're actually not going to get NPCs chasing you. There will be zero NPCs chasing you. All you have to do is worry about real people. Now, either you could use the cargo bob, which I wouldn't do in a public lobby because you're more of a target. I would just drive the vehicle. You don't have to worry about NPCs and most people will leave you alone. Um, for the vehicle deliveries because a you're in a fast vehicle and b the deliveries are usually really short so before they even realize what you're doing 
you're going to deliver it. Well, there'll be a lot more of that later on. So what we're going to do is what you should do. So let's say we've just dropped off our vehicle, which we have. All we need to do is come outside and this is going to be sitting right here. And I would do all of your source missions, obviously, in an invite only lobby. As soon as you get in here, you can see right here, vehicle cargo. So we're just going to source some vehicle cargo. And then you can see this is a standard range, which is good. Standard range is what we want because we want to fill up our cargo warehouse or sorry, our vehicle warehouse with standard and mid range. So I'm actually going to use my oppressor. For you guys, you can use whatever you want. And it does say steal the nightshade. So if we go onto our map, you can see it's right here. So I assume this one is just driving around. Sometimes when you see that, it could actually mean that it's like the police have pulled you over or something like that. But since, like I say, it is the blue text, I know that the vehicle's kind of out in the open, so I actually can use this. Now, if I wasn't worrying about profit or anything like that, I would just take my oppressor mark two. And if I wasn't, if I was just trying to be as fast as possible to fill up this lobby, uh, sorry, to fill up my warehouse and I wasn't worried about profit, just take your oppressor mark two over to it or your buzzard or sparrow and then just drive it back. You may get a little bit of damage, but it is what it is. You're just trying to be fast. You're not trying to, you know, make profit. But if you're trying to make as much profit as possible, then take a little bit more time. Take the cargo bob and you can just pick it up and fly it back without being damaged. All right. So for me right now, it did look like on the minimap when we looked that it was driving around in the middle of the street. But now as we're getting closer, I can see it's still in the same place. And there's a helicopter up there, which means this is going to be, like I say, probably the one with the police chase, which is not a very easy one to do. But we are going to try and pick this thing up with a cargo bob in the middle of a police chase. Let's see how we can do. All right, so here's the thing. We picked up the vehicle, but like I had told you guys, we had to wait until it got to a straight line. And this helicopter is way too weak. Like, this vehicle should not be weak at all. Um, <laughs> but it is very weak. And I know from experience, driving it in this condition, um, we're not going to make it back. But let's see how far we get. The, the driver's still in there too, by the way. So as soon as we set this down... He will drive away. All right, so here we are bringing this one back. Like I say, it's this one was actually sucked. We were able to pick the thing up, the vehicle up with our cargo bar. But unfortunately, like I say, that helicopter is made out of paper. So the police helicopters ended up destroying it. So then you've got to drop the vehicle and drive it back. It's fine, um, but it's, th those missions suck. You don't get them very often, though. All right, but now that it's been delivered, the same thing. We're just going to go outside straight away. And then here it is. We have our uh, terabyte right here. Now, at this point, there is a two-minute cooldown before you can source, just like some of the, like the cargo business and things like that. Now, you could go to your CEO office and grab the cargo, Bob, bring it back over here and park it. But for me personally, I'm just going to do the rest of mine with my Oppressor Mark II. So I'll show you how to do that instead of using the Cargo Bob. So let's go over to our touchscreen here and then the same thing. And this one, we just got to wait two minutes. Let's wait. All right. Three, two. All right. And here we go. One second. So now we're going to confirm and I'm just going to show you what I usually do. So usually my Oppressor is parked right there. So I just jump on it because I usually always send it back here because I've been using it. Uh, but since we use the cargo bob, it is parked right here. So this one, it's a blue one again, but I don't know if we could have trusted that with the cargo bob or not. So I'm just going to go straight over there. And this is the way that I typically personally do these. I don't use the cargo bob too much anymore, unless you're doing a cell mission, like I say, in an invite-only lobby. That way you won't get any damage from being chased by the bad guys, the NPCs. But if you're in a public lobby, you don't need to use the cargo bob anyway because you can just drive it and there's no NPCs. So anyway, let's speed this up till we get here. All right, coming up to it now. And this one was pretty far away as well. So the cargo bob would have taken about three years to get here. So we need to steal the vehicle so we can see it is right here. Doesn't look like there's any armed guards or anything here either. So this is actually an easy one. The cargo bob could have picked this up, but in all honesty... I'm fine with just picking this up and driving it. I do enjoy driving. I don't drive enough. So what I'm going to do now is, again, go to vehicles, return to storage, and that's going to go into the terabyte. So as soon as we start up another source mission, it's going to be right there inside the terabyte, and I can just take it right away. It's perfect. All right. So this is one of those ones which is speed, which you need to stay at a certain speed. So... Yeah, this is another reason we wouldn't have been able to pick it up. I love this car too, by the way. This is another thing. You get to test drive all these cars. Listen to it. All right, let's get this thing back to the warehouse. And if you're newer and you're like, oh, I need to pause the game to put a marker so I can drive back to my... Um and drive back to the warehouse because obviously the marker or the GPS doesn't show up until the time's run out. Luckily for you, you can see on your mini map there where your terabyte is. So just drive towards your terabyte 
and that's where you're going to be headed until the timer runs out like now and you can see that the gps is now back on and just like that we're almost back now the good news about doing missions like this is you won't get npcs chasing you the hard part of this mission was to keep it above that speed limit they're not going to make you do that and then be like oh and then there's some npcs that are going to come and try and kill you now nah. so it, these ones are actually pretty easy so you can see this is another way to do source missions without the cargo bob and this one worked out perfect because then what happens is now that we've delivered it we go straight back outside straight back into our terabyte and there it is there's our oppressor so now what we'll do is we'll source another one as soon as we've sourced it we'll literally just grab our oppressor right here fly to the location grab the car bring it back and do the same thing again and it's going to be still right back here just make sure when you pick up the vehicle you put your personal vehicle into storage and it'll send it straight back here Okay, so at this point, I feel like you should feel confident that you know what you're doing. The fastest way to source missions, having a terabyte parked outside, having your oppressor in the back of it so you can drive to the location and then store it back into this. Drive the car back and then walk straight back in and your vehicle's going to be there. Or use the cargo bob. The cargo bob, honestly, in my opinion, I don't use that as much as I used to on source missions. Genuinely, 90% of the time, I only use my oppressor in the back of this. And if the car even gets a little bit of damage, I'm not too worried about it. We'll make profit at the end of this. And sometimes with the cargo bob, it can just go more wrong than it does go right. So I would personally suggest just using the oppressor. Now, as far as sail missions are concerned, that's where it's a completely different kettle of fish. So let's go inside. So like I say, I personally would wait until you filled it up with 10 standard and 10 mid-range vehicles because that way you can source a vehicle. It'll be a high end. Then you can sell it. And then that 20 minute cooldown, maybe go grab another one and then you can just wait or you can go do VIP missions. Tomorrow's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a lot of money with this. But this is more so just a guide on setting it up, how to do it and how to sell. When it comes to making tons of money, that'll be in tomorrow's video. But we are going to do one cell mission here together. Now, like I say, if you're in an invite-only lobby, if, you, if you're if you like, you know what? I hate doing anything in the public lobby. I always get griefed. I'm only doing it invite-only. If that is the case, have your cargo bob parked outside. And as soon as you hit sell, you're going to drive the vehicle out these doors, put the vehicle on the street, grab the cargo bob, pick up the vehicle and drop it off at the location. Use the cargo bob in invite-only lobbies. But if you want to make more money and not have to worry about NPCs, I would recommend, let's say you've just sourced your top range vehicles, you have all the mid range, all the um, standard range, and you're like, okay, it's time to start selling. Go to online, public lobby. This is just what I would recommend. You're going to make more money with the bonuses and you don't need to worry about NPCs. So as soon as you join, you're going to go up to your concierge right here, your assistant. So go to personal vehicle, terabyte, oppressor mark two, and this will spawn you in your oppressor mark two. And all right, now we're just going to head over to our warehouse. All right, you can see there's a motorcycle club that's actually uh, doing some stuff right now. So that's actually a good thing because people will probably go towards that versus going to a vehicle cargo. That is for sure. All right, now we're just going to head to our desk. And then right now, we're going to sell a top range. Now, you can see I have eight out of the ten. So I still need to get two more. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to do one sale mission. And then I have seven of these. So I still need to get a few more of these. But again, for the sake of this mission or the video, we're going to do a top range, which I actually have more of anyway. Okay, so we're going to be selling this one right here. You can see delivery commissions 80. That's usually 40. If we go to export, you can see you get different options here. So obviously specialist deal is the one you want to do. Now, typically it costs 100,000 to the commission offer. But obviously now it's two times pay. So it's going to be 200,000. Are you sure you'd like to pay 40000 to modify this vehicle and sell it? Yes. So just go ahead and follow the prompts. So I just did everything stock and that was it. We just did everything, the first thing that comes up. So like I say, we're in a public lobby. We're not going to get NPCs, which is the most annoying thing in an invite-only lobby. You can see, so we're about four miles. So uh, it's not too bad. Let's see if we get griefed. Of course, if I'm making a video, chances are we're going to get blown up. But <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. All right, so let's speed this part up here a little bit. And see how easy this is. This is actually a lot further than they usually are. Uh, but it's still not that far. It's still less than four miles. All right, let's go. One thing I should also mention is try not to crash the vehicle. Obviously, you will lose some of the profit if you start crashing this thing. So luckily for me, I'm kind of OCD anyway with this. If you guys have seen my uh, taxi videos. Well, I say that. The last time I did a taxi video, the, the taxi was pretty destroyed. Uh, but before that... I did a taxi video and I did like an hour of taxi work and I didn't even have a scratch on it. I tend to uh, 
try to not damage my vehicles. Anyway, let's continue. Let's speed this up. So like I say, though, for this mission, if you're in an invite only, you should be doing this in a cargo bob. Uh, but if you're in a public and you want to do it with a cargo bob, you could be doing this with a cargo bob, too. Um, so it could be a little bit faster, depending on how far away it is in the terrain. Obviously, for me going through the mountains, uh, the cargo bob may have been faster for this one. But you got to keep in mind, most players don't really chase people that are driving. But if you're in a cargo bob with a car floating underneath it, you are you have a big target on your back. That's all I'll say. All right. And here we are coming up to the end here. That took about two, three minutes. Wasn't that long at all. And uh, that's an easy 200k right there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now you can see we got 296. So you're probably a little bit confused. Like, wait, it was 200 as a 296. Not only is it easier to deliver these in a public lobby, but you are going to get the bonus, the high demand bonus inside public lobbies. Now, the reason that was 296, I think it is, is because we didn't have enough people. But if it was a full lobby, I think if I had 24 people in here, we would be getting 200 and no, 300,000 flat. So 296, we were close enough, but it's 300,000 is the max. So now you have 20 minutes. You're probably thinking, all right, what am I going to do for 20 minutes? Now, if your garage is full and you have 10 standard, 10 mid-range, and you just sold your only high end, just go back and source another one while you're waiting. Or let's say you have like multiple. Your garage is full of high-end vehicles. You're just waiting 20 minutes to sell it. Do a VIP mission. Or do like a payphone contract. You can even do a KO Perico in the, between this. You can make so much money. And like I say, in tomorrow's video, I am going to be uh, showing you how to maximize the amount of money you can make with this selling and how much money you can make an hour. It's actually pretty insane this week. So definitely give it a shot yourselves. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned at least one thing or maybe one thing I showed you that makes help you speed things up a little bit. Let me know if you have any tips or tricks in the comment section down below so other people, including myself, can learn more things if there's something I've missed. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. We have an incredible community here on this channel. So if I don't answer it, one of the other guys will. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. By the way, GTA 6 was announced yesterday, which is absolutely mind-blowing. And I've seen a lot of videos on people talking about Michael DLC. Now, listen, I hope there's a Michael DLC. I think that would wrap up the whole GTA 5 as it is, as a game is online. It would wrap it up perfectly. And I'm not saying that it's not going to be a Michael DLC. I hope it is a Michael DLC. But I have seen a lot of people talking about how Michael went to LA last week. And he was talking about how he's got business that he needs to do in LA. And people are using that as, oh, he was in LA at Rockstar Games. He wasn't. Like, it's that's all rubbish. Like, I do follow him on social media, the guy who played Michael, Ned. And he was in LA. Obviously, he always insinuates that it's something to do with GTA. Because that's kind of his brand. All of the appearances and things he does always evolves around GTA because that's what he's famous for. But it wasn't GTA. I literally follow him, like I say, and on social media, he, he went there, there was a car, he had business, but it was nothing to do with GTA. It was nothing to do with Rockstar. He went to like a car show. He did some autograph signings and pictures and stuff. He was not at Rockstar Games. So for people that are saying he was in LA and he's doing, that wasn't. I hope it's a DLC with him, but that was not why he was there last week. So unfortunately, that's not the case. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Goodbye.